Hello, this is Professor Hill, and we're talking about integration today in video number two for Physics 2140. We want to look at two specific integrations which we discussed in class, but which I didn't do because I didn't do all of the calculus and algebra involved, because it gets kind of tedious, and it's better to watch in the comfort of your own uh, dorm room, home, wherever you live. So the first one I want to look at is finding the electric field of a line. So suppose we have a line with length s, okay, and I want to calculate the electric field a distance h above the center of the line. To do that, we break the line up into a bunch of little pieces. So the total electric field at that target is equal to the sum of the electric field of all each little piece added all together. And the electric field of a tiny little piece is given by the formula of the electric field for a point charge as we discussed in class. I won't, I'll rush through this bit because we've already talked about it. So dE is equal to k dQ over r cubed r vec. We need to distinguish what dQ and r vec are. So to do this we need a coordinate system the coordinate axes we're going to use is we'll say that this direction is the x direction. This one is the y. Let's call this point, because this is a length s, let's call this point right here the origin. So that this point is s over 2 comma 0. This point over here is minus s over 2 comma 0. And this point is 0 comma h. Now all of those were arbitrary. You could do this problem with different axes with a different origin. This just turns out to be the most symmetric, the, the one that makes the most sense. So in this case, uh, dq, we need to rewrite dq in terms of the integration variable x, because x is the variable we're scanning over when we pick up all the charges on the line. And r vec can be written as minus x x hat plus h y hat. So any given point on the line each little point is labeled is at position x comma zero to get from that source to the target. For instance, this point right here is at x zero to get from the source to the target. We need to move negative x in the x hat direction and uh, a distance x in the negative x hat direction and a distance h in the y direction. We put all those together into the formula. We get that the electric field is equal to the integral of k lambda dx over the length of r cubed, which is x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves power times r vec, which is minus x x hat plus h y hat. And this integral is over x. The limits of x in this case are from negative s over 2 to s over 2. All right. So, so much we did in class. Now what I'd like to do is to actually do this integral. The first thing we notice about this integral is that it is the integral of the sum of two terms. There's the x hat term here and there's the y hat term here. So we can distribute and rewrite this as the sum of two integrals. So we'll do that first. Minus s over 2 to s over 2 of k lambda dx over x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves power times minus x x hat plus the integral from minus s over 2 to s over 2 of k lambda dx over x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves h y hat. The second thing we want to do is to pull out the constants out of the integral. These are integrals over x, so anything which does not depend on x, which does not depend as we scan over the line, will not can be pulled outside of the integral. Now there's a big question here. The only thing we're not necessarily sure of is this lambda, the charge density. Does the charge density depend on x or not? Um, how we deal with it is very simple. If we're given lambda as a functional form of x, we simply replace lambda with what lambda is, x, x squared, whatever it is, and then do the integral as normal. But in this case, we'll talk, we'll think about the simplest possible case, 
and we'll say that lambda is a constant. If lambda is a constant, then it comes out of the integral. So does k, and also the the unit vectors come out of the integral as well. x hat and y hat are constants. That is, they always point in the same direction no matter where you are. So we can pull them out of the integrals as well. So we have e is equal to k lambda x hat, and there's a minus sign, times the integral from negative s over 2 to s over 2 of x dx over x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves plus k lambda h y hat times the integral from negative s over 2 to s over 2 of dx over x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves power. Notice that we can't separate the x squared and h squared because they're not. This h squared, while it doesn't depend on x, is added to an x and everything is taken to the 3 halves power. It's in a denominator. We can't separate it. Okay. Now, these two integrals, they can be done using substitution of variables. Uh, the one on the left can be done by uh, sub going from x to x squared, letting x squared be the variable of integration. This one I think you can done use, using a trigonometric substitution. But these two integrals are so common in physics, in electromagnetism, that we just remember what they are. So we look them up once, and this integral, x over x squared plus h squared to the 3 halves, is minus 1 over the square root of x squared plus h squared. And that's evaluated from minus s over 2 to s over 2. And this one, without the x on top, that evaluates to x over h squared times the square root of x squared plus h squared from minus s over 2 to s over 2. Now a word for people who are studying for exams, I don't expect you to memorize these integrals or to do them on an exam. Um, if you need them, I will give them to you. Or if you think you need them and I haven't given them to you, I'll be happy to give them to you if you ask. All right, so now we substitute s over 2 and minus s over 2 for both of these cases. Minus k lambda x hat from uh, the two minus signs cancel, actually. And we get 1 over the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared minus 1 over the square root of negative s over 2 squared plus h squared. Of course, the negative sign doesn't matter here. Okay? And if we look at these two terms, these two terms are equal to each other and we're subtracting them. So this piece is going to be zero. That is, the electric field has no x component. And if we look at the geometry of the situation here, if we ask just from a matter of symmetry which direction the electric field is going to point in, pretty clear that the electric field at this x right above the center of the line has to point either straight up or straight down. That is, in the y direction. So the fact that the x component is 0 is not a surprise. Scan, scan, scan. Okay. If I do the second integral, k lambda h y hat, I get s over 2. Actually, let's pull the h squared out of the brackets because that's a constant. s over 2 divided by the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared minus negative s over 2 divided by the square root of negative s over 2 squared plus h squared. Okay, And we notice that unlike in the case of the x component, these do not cancel because this, these two minus signs cancel each other, and you end up with a sum. The denominators are the same, and so you have s over 2 plus s over 2. Oops. And so you have k lambda, oh, we can cancel one factor of h here. So we have e is equal to k lambda y hat over h times s over 2 plus s over 2 divided by the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared. s over 2 plus s over 2 is s, of course. And so you have the electric field is equal to k lambda s y hat 
divided by uh, h times the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared. OK? Now, there's one last simplification we could make if we wanted to. If we look at this line, remember the geometry. The geometry was that the line has lambda, sorry, the line has uh, length s and charge density lambda, which we just said is constant. So if we have a constant line, de line density of lambda over a line of length s, lambda times s is equal to the charge. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could write this as k q y hat, where q is the total charge of the line, divided by h times s over 2 squared plus h squared. Okay, if we wanted to, not a big deal either way. Now, as I mentioned in class, there are two approximations we can make to this situation. Uh, if we assume that s is much bigger than h, then the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared is roughly equal to s over 2. That is, when s is very big, then it, the h squared doesn't matter in that sum. And the electric field, then, is approximately equal to k lambda s y hat over h times s over 2. The s's cancel, and you end up with k 2k lambda y hat over h. Now this is the case where s is much bigger than h. That means when the line is much, very, very long. When the line is very, very long, the electric field depends, uh, dies off as 1 over distance, not 1 over distance squared. And this is the field of an infinite line. On the other hand, if s is much smaller than h, then the square root of s over 2 squared plus h squared is roughly equal to h. And then the electric field is equal to kq, let's use the q we should use the before, y hat divided by h times h, or kq over h squared y hat. Now h is the distance above the line, and y hat is the vector that points away from the line. So when s is very small, that is when the line is very, very small, it basically looks like a point, and so we get the field of a point charge. OK. I'm running into the YouTube limit for video size now, so I'm going to stop this one. And on the next video in this series, we'll talk about, we'll integrate and find the electric field of a disk.